Om Shri Sai Ram. Sai Ram, dear brothers and sisters, welcome to the 19th edition of Samarpan program here at Sarvadharma Service Center in Farming Dilboro, Howell Township, New Jersey, United States. Today, I have the honor to introduce our Samarpan speaker for the month, our dear sister, Suman Rana. Sister Suman, originally from Jalandhar, Punjab, joined Sri Satya Sai Higher Secondary School, Vidyagiri Prashanti Nilayam, for the ninth grade in 1985. She then continued through this high school at Prashanti. As she was in the first batch of students for the 11th and 12th grade, there were only 18 girls in her grade. And therefore, as you can imagine, she had many opportunities to interact with Bhagwan. As a Sai student, she participated and played a key role in organizing many activities, ranging from singing, dancing, painting, and making cards for Swami. She had a lovely opportunity to observe Swami very closely, seeing how he took care of every minute detail from getting the classrooms built to arranging teachers for them. After completing high school education in Perthi, she joined Sri Satya Sai College in Anantapur, where she completed her Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Education degrees. One of her fondest and most memorable experiences was when she received the gold medal for achieving the highest grade point average for Bachelor of Education from Bhagwan himself. After graduating, she went back to Jalandhar, Punjab, and put her knowledge and skills to use by working as a teacher at DAV school. And also she started the Balvikas classes there. She then moved to the United States in the year 1999 with her daughter Namankita and joined her husband, brother Ravinder Singrana, who is here today with us. They moved to different states in the, in the country, finally settling in New Jersey in 2004. The main reason for moving to New Jersey was the East Brunswick Sai Center, in her words, where they were captivated by the melodious bhajans. Sister Suman was a homemaker and also ran uh, her family business until 2013. In 2014, she applied for certification for teaching and started teaching as a substitute teacher. She taught middle school science to eighth grade students in the year 2021 at Plainsboro School and later joined as STEAM, as an STEAM teacher in another public school. She continued to participate in center seva activities and joining hands with the alumni groups for service activities while also serving as a SSC teacher. And we know that for a fact because, you know, she was one of the primary organizers of the alumni meets, which happens here in Sarvadharma. Um, both her daughters, Namankita and Aparajita, have attended SSC classes. Namankita, who graduated with an engineering degree, is working for Bank of America, and Aparajita is now working for Microsoft in Seattle. For us at Sarvadharma, Sister Suman is a very special sister, as she and her family, including her parents, Mamta Rajput and Ramesh Rajput are actively involved in several SEVA activities. We recently heard her brother Santosh Rajput's experiences on Samarpan program a few months ago, and he gave an excellent Samarpan talk on you know, breaking the rules, if you all remember. With this, I would like to invite Sister Suman to the podium and request her to share with us her experience with Swami for the next 70 minutes or so. Welcome, Sister Sumara. Saira.
my humble pranams at the lotus feet of our beloved Swami. Sairam everyone. And uh, I'm honored to share my experiences with Swami on this beautiful, bright uh, Saturday morning. And uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, the topic of my talk today is Samarpan, uh, which I yesterday thought that it perhaps it means Sharanagati or surrender and or maybe an offering to at the lotus feet of our beloved Swami. So I'm taking this opportunity to share experiences as an offering and I surrender to Swami because the past week was so hectic that uh, I told brother and since he encouraged, I said, Swami, I'm offering it to you. Please uh, take care. And uh, today morning by nine o'clock, uh, I was ready with at least outline. I used my uh, slides. So uh, to start with, I'll uh, like to sing a small bhajan uh, or a song which I always imagined even when I was in school and college. I would just imagine that Swami is in Prishanti Nilayam. I'm sitting in front of him and I'm singing this song. Kanha, kanha, aan padi mein tere dwar mohe chakar samaj nihar kanha kanha aan padi mein tere dwar boond hi boond mein pyar ki chun kar pyasi rahi par laai hu giri dhar टूट न जाए आस की कागर मोहना ऐसी कांकरिया नहीं मार कान्हा कान्हा आन पड़ी मैं तेरे द्वार माटी करो या स्वर्ण बना लो मन को मेरे चर नो से लगा लो मुरली समझ हा तो में उठा लो सोचो ना अब है कृष्ण मुरा कान्हा कान्हा so this bhajan or song is very dear to me. Uh, even though the words seem very simple, it just says that boond hi boond, that I have collected drop by drop my love, dear Lord, and I have filled the uh, gagariya and brought it to you. Please, as Krishna is known, uh, just like our Swami, every now and then he likes to break our bubble. Uh, uh, whatever we might be thinking and we are on the ninth cloud uh, thinking that we are achieving so much and uh, so uh, the gopikas are requesting or uh, the soul here is requesting to god please don't break my uh, gagariya and then uh, the second paragraph mati karo ya swarna banalo it is easy to say that okay uh, please make into what uh, make me into whatever you want. So uh, in a way, it just means whatever role God gives you, you feel happy in that and you do best in that role. So it perhaps that also means surrender and uh, which can be very difficult at times. It is easy to be happy and joyful uh, when everything is happening according to our wishes. And uh, the moment things are not happening according to our expectations, uh, we are not very happy. And sadly, the test is right in front of us. And we are like, Swami, I'm floundering. Uh, where is my equanimity? Where is my balance? And uh, the sense of doership catches on us. Swami would often say that testing is like tasting for me. But uh, our relentless desire to be happy and uh, 
seek comfortable things for ourselves it uh, it makes us forget the thing that pain uh, pleasure is an interval between two pains so in this context i'm going to try and make everything seem very light that uh, uh, how we can surrender to god that is once a devotee who was very upset with the world and he was just uh, walking in a farm and he happened to see a uh, slide he happened to see that uh, there were so many pumpkins which were growing on very uh, tender creepers and he kept on walking he was very skeptical he always thought that uh, there was no logic in creation and god didn't do this thing proper he should have done that way uh so as he was walking he saw that this big huge pumpkins are attached to these uh tender creepers and just lying there on the ground and he kept on walking and as he went ahead he saw a huge banyan tree uh so i think i guess it was in india and uh, then he saw that the huge banyan tree had small berries on it so he said uh i guess god has no logic look at this the creepers uh, have such huge pumpkins and this banyan tree has small berries on it and as he was saying uh, uh, there was a breeze and some berries fell fell on his head and the person next to him said that i think god has a logic behind it uh, that is if there was a huge pumpkin which was growing on this tree and it would have fallen on you perhaps you would have collapsed so i think we uh, don't need to check god's uh, intelligence or plan so whatever he gives us and offers us it is the best for us uh i like to start my day with prayers always that is uh, oh lord take my love let it flow in fullness of devotion to thee oh lord take my hands and let them work incessantly for thee O oh Lord, take my mind and thoughts and let them be in tune with Thee. O oh Lord, take my everything and let me be an instrument of Thee. Uh, I would like to share uh, another experience with you, which is about surrender. Uh, that is when I was at the, uh, uh, I was with my parents. My mom was the first one who came to know about Swami. and uh, once it so happened that my parents were building our house in jalandhar and uh, they had just laid the foundation and before the uh, function which is uh, done uh, when they laid the foundation my mother went to see my grandfather that is my nana ji my mother's father and uh, he gave to my mother a small stone it's semi precious stone it's neelam and he said uh, okay he gave her some gifts for uh, her foundation laying ceremony and then he said i want to get a ring made out of this can you please uh, take it with you and check in jalandhar uh, and perhaps get a ring made for me so my mom was also getting ready for the function she took the uh, the stone with herself and uh, she came to jalandhar while these things were happening the foundation was laid so many guests came and my mom had put it in one of the suitcases uh in a small store room there was still no flooring done in the house and after 3 4 months my mom thought okay when everything is done i will look at that stone and get it fixed uh get a ring made for my grandfather so uh in the meantime after 3 to 4 months when the floors were laid out and everything my mom also selected that it was a plain kind of floor with the uh, um with almost the same color like the neelam uh, which uh, the stone which my grandfather had given that kind of chips i don't know if you all know in india they used to put cement and in that they'll put chips so and then when almost everything was done then fine day my mom thought okay let me go and look for the stone when she went there she saw in the suitcase there was no neelam uh there was a cloth in which she had wrapped but the neelam was missing my mom was so desperate she thought oh my god everybody is going to think that perhaps she was building the house and then she sold the <laughs> neelam and uh, 
perhaps you put the money in it and Swami, what am I going to do? You know everything that uh, I, I really want that uh, stone back. So she was constantly praying. It was also our summer holidays and we were with our mom. And uh, um, and then one night, that's what she told me, that uh, told us that she had a dream and she was constantly praying to Swami, please protect me, please find that Neelam. Her state was so bad that she would be staring at the floor to see maybe they put the stone in the chip somewhere. But then we as children, we thought that if it is gone into the chips, it can never be found. And uh, so one night my mom had a dream uh, where Swami was holding a japamala in front of her. And the entire japamala was made up of those neelam stones. And my mom said, Swami, I just need one. I don't need the whole japmala. Just give me one of these neelam stones. And her dream was over. She got up with a very calm mind in the morning. And I still remember it used to be so beautiful. Uh, when she woke us up in the morning, there was beautiful fragrance in the house because she, my parents are very disciplined. And uh, she, she would light the lamp. And she told us very lovingly uh, that I'll be washing clothes. As you know, in those days, there were no washing machines. And my mom used to wash clothes very nicely. And she said, okay, I'll be washing clothes. You both have your breakfast and then go to the next door plot. There was a plot which was not yet built next to our house. And you can play there for some time till I finish my work. So we were very happy. We said, fine. And my mom was washing clothes and we went, myself and my brother, whom you saw, he, he's younger than me for five, uh, five years. We both went out and he took some marbles. And so what we were playing is he would tell me where to aim and then I would tell him where to aim and we would try to throw the, uh, uh, take out the uh, tiny rocks or pebbles which were there in the soil. They were like mounds of soil. So at one point I saw uh, there was something popping in the soil in uh, one of the mounds. And I said, Santosh, why don't you aim here? Uh, and he said, okay. And he took an aim, and I still remember the day was as beautiful as this day today. And he hit the stone, and it popped out. And as you know, children are so fond of collecting all these fancy stones. I immediately picked it up, and I said, this one looks so beautiful. It is so smooth. Uh, let's show it to mom. And uh, for once, I would recommend to all parents, when children bring all these small things, perhaps you should make a note of them. So we both went inside, very excited to our my mom, to our mom, and the tap was full on, like how it is in Prashanti Indian. The water was flowing, and she was washing and squeezing the clothes. And I was like, "Mom, Suno, uh, see what is in my hand." And my mom said, and my mom just turned and she saw, and she just grabbed the stone and she was like, "Ah, ye to mera neelam hai." <laughs> It was, can you believe it? It was the same stone which she had lost and she was looking for. So I would say this is like Samarpan. If you surrender to the Lord, pray with faith and leave everything to him, he can find a pebble or a rock or a stone in this entire universe and bring it for you. Swami, please uh, take care of us all the time and thank you so much for... Uh, uh, taking care of all our needs. Then uh, there's a video. Uh, do you think it can be played? Uh, it is. Uh, uh, no, the other one. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, no worries. So it is about the same thing that uh, once a person uh, approached Swami and he said, Swami, you know, petrol prices are going so high. Uh, there is so much water and sea and oceans around uh, southern India, you know, around Chennai. Uh, why don't you uh, change all that into petrol? And this uh, person also had the habit of smoking. And Swami said, I can do that. But you know what would happen if a person like you smokes and carelessly throws the cigarette stub? Everything would be on fire. So... Uh, I guess we have to be really very careful about asking Swami uh, for what we want. Hopefully, my prayer is always that if it is good or if you have something better in, my, 
in your mind please skip that <laughs> and uh, i cannot see the slide if it plays it's fine mm -hmm. so uh, it was in the year 19 85 I joined Swami school in uh, Prashanti in India and we had to pray a lot there were around 30 kids from all over the India uh, and also abroad a few and they had come for admission and I was going there for the first time I had told my parents I'm just going to go to uh, Prashanti in India I don't know why I thought of it I had the imagination that perhaps once I get into Swami school, everything will be set. Suddenly I'll turn into a genius and my life, whole thing will be set. I'll study there and become some great scientist or uh, uh, success would just come to me. But it was not that easy. First of all, when I went to Prashanti Nilim, I saw that uh, there were so many kids who were coming for maybe like fourth or fifth time and they all were praying relentlessly for admissions. And I was like, Swami, I cannot come again. I'm not coming here fourth and fifth time asking for admission. Uh, but then, yes, with Swami's grace, I did get uh, admission. Uh, that is, only five kids out of 30 were chosen. And I was one of them. You see the beautiful building. It is the most fascinating architecture which I have seen. And then there is Kanha, uh, Krishna right in the middle, who is standing and dancing on top of those five snakes. And uh, it symbolizes perhaps that you have to curb all those negative tendencies and let the divinity within you dance and be happy and be joyous and not identify with those uh, negative qualities. Uh, so I didn't know the depth of all these teachings. So when I went to school, it was quite testing, but I'm going to share with you only the positive experiences. Uh, after a couple of years, when I was in my, I think, 11th or 12th, my brother joined uh, Swami school. Uh, for him also, we had to pray a lot. And then finally, Swami said, Acha us ladke ko lelo, admission de do. And uh, for first one year, Swami did not talk much to him. But in the second year, that is when I was in my 12th grade, it was Raksha Bandhan time. And I used to make, uh, we used to all make handmade uh, rakhis for our brothers. So I collected some nice stones and shining stones and uh, with nice threads, I made a beautiful rakhi. The only difference was that when I made rakhi for him, I was constantly chanting Swami's name or uh, Gayatri Mantra because I just wanted uh, Swami to protect my brother. And I made it with a lot of love. And on the day of Raksha Bandhan, I got up early in the morning and uh, I got ready and I called Santosh. I tied, I took Swami's name, I tied Rakhi for him. And I went down to my classroom to study. And then as I had just, it was around 7 o'clock or 7, maybe 7.10. And I was there downstairs and suddenly I heard a hustle as though somebody was coming. These were our new classrooms. I moved from my classroom and I came to uh, the main entrance lobby and I saw Swami's car is there. And my immediate thought was, it is only 7.10. Swami, who is going to give darshan? You are coming to our school. But it was so beautiful. And just as I was looking at him and he was uh, coming up the steps, so many kids got in, all the little boys and everybody just sat there and I was able to see Swami from a distance. And then I saw my brother was sitting there and Swami was constantly talking to him. He asked him and he held his wrist. He was looking at uh, the rakhi which he was wearing. And uh, what Swami was asking him is that, who gave you this rakhi? And my brother said, Swami, my sister gave. Oh, she bought it from the market? So my brother said, no, Swami, she made it. And then he took him to the office room where our principal sits. And he asked him to explain how she made the rakhi. <laughs> and uh, he told her, uh, told him the entire process that she took threads and she brushed them 
and then they became like soft and fluffy. You cut it out and then you stick all the gems on it. I don't know why would Swami want to listen to the entire process of making a simple rakhi. But uh, I guess it is just Sharnagati. I did not know. And my brother told me later that this is what Swami was saying. And he told her, uh, told him that, you know, uh, the relationship between a brother and sister is divine. In this Kali Yuga, uh, in this, in this Kali Yuga when every day seems like a battle, uh, it is very important to have blessings of the sister with you uh, because that's what Krishna's sister uh, blessed him and she said Vijay Bhava. So um, I always say that uh, may my brother and all my brothers and sisters and Sai family, may we all be uh, Vijay Bhava. That is, may we succeed in pleasing our beloved Swami. May we be able to make ourselves into better human beings so that Swami is happy with us. And uh, you can play the uh, video. Okay, that's fine. Uh, maybe I already narrated the incident, so it's okay. So I'll go over the next. Uh, um, there's another slide. Perhaps I will um, share about. Yes, now I can see. Raksha Bandhan Day is done. Handmade cards for Swami. Uh, I, some of you may have heard this experience. That is once uh, um, me and my brother, we decided that I would make every Darshan day, I would make a card for Swami. So um, once we had chemistry test or something and uh, the teachers told us that we were not giving enough time to study. So the entire class was uh, not allowed to make cards except for when we are done with our studies. And that Thursday when... Uh, I was uh, supposed to make a card for Swami. My brother came in the night uh, during the study hall and he asked, Didi, are you making card? I said, I cannot make right now. I'm studying, but I'll do one thing in the morning when I have time, whatever I can make quickly, I'll try to make and give it to you. So next day morning, I just took a simple paper and I said, Swami, please draw something, whatever you want me to draw. I have no idea. So I quickly drew something very beautiful. There was a candle in the middle, uh, like a flame. And then there were beautiful candles all around it. And uh, in that, I wrote the words, even in the deepest dark, we shall not be afraid, Lord, for you are with us. I did not understand the meaning much, but I wrote those words in the card. And uh, in the meantime, my brother came and he said, Didi, is the card ready? I was very scared because it was simple paper. I said, this is the card I have made. Uh, you can just take it. And I was really afraid that perhaps Swami is going to say, what is this kind of simple paper you have taken and made a very uh, normal card? Uh, but I just kept quiet. So when we sat there, we, uh, I was sitting on this side and my brother uh, naturally was sitting with other boys on the other side. And Swami came straight to him. And he took the card and suddenly Swami turned very serious. I couldn't make out what happened. I thought, okay, I think Swami doesn't like the card. And uh, later on, my brother told that Swami asked him, what is the deepest dark? Uh, and my brother didn't know what to answer. He said, Swami, perhaps going away from you. And Swami said, yes, yes, going away from you. But for me, the, uh, the best solace is that even in the deepest dark, we shall not be afraid, Lord, for you are with us. That even when we are going through trouble sometimes, we have to remember that Swami is always with us. So uh, how much time more do I have? Okay. Uh, then I'll go over another uh, instance. That is the first time we as a girl's batch of student 
students we got interview from swami i think swami likes it a lot when we pray for other people so when i was in my 12th grade my brother used to often talk to swami uh, and i told him you know what we are the first batch of uh, 12th grade students in swami school uh, can you ask swami to give us an interview even though there was so much negativity like many people thought swami won't give interview uh, to girls he'll give only to the boys uh but i would tell him that whenever you get an opportunity say uh, swami sisters ko please interview do so every time he used to pray and that's how we had started giving cards to swami so on the first day and swami already spoke to the boys 12th grade boys brothers and uh i in my classroom i said i'll initiate the process i will give first time card to swami and i'll ask him swami please give us interview so i was sitting in the first row and swami came so beautiful and in his orange robe it is it is quite sometimes it is a little bit scary also because he used to look like so majestic and i was holding a card and the moment swami came near i handed over it and i said swami please give us interview and uh, swami said uh ha dega dega and then he looked behind me and he said Oh, क्योंकि मैंने उन बॉयज को दिया इसलिए ब्रदर्स को दिया इसलिए जेलस फील करता है एंड आई सेड नो स्वामी आई आई सेड वेरी ओपनली नो स्वामी आई एम नॉट जेलस आई एम हैप्पी इवन इफ दे गॉट इट ओनली थिंग इज वी वॉन्ट फॉर आर सेल्स एंड देन स्वामी सेट ओके देगा देगा बैट हो है ना आई सेट डाउन बट देन इट सेट मी थिंकिंग दैट whenever we are asking god for something let's not ask it out of maybe competition or jealousy or because somebody else has it and then uh, so for one month till uh, uh, like we were uh, we used to sit one month this went on the inner even our teachers had to think positively that yes swami can give interview and on the very last day when we thought that perhaps there's no chance swami came out and then he again as usual he took the card and he told us to sit down and uh, he went for a whole round and then we realized that he did not pick up anybody for interview and we thought today might be the day but still he was not looking at us he was slowly like a krishna uh, he was walking and then he came to the veranda still he did not he was looking down and walking i hope uh, maybe many of you will remember and we were like please uh, look up look at us and give us an interview and then again he turned in opposite direction from us and then suddenly he turned around and he said uh prema uh, and he called my our principal and the 18 girls come for interview and we were we were like on cloud nine <laughs> we all ran from there and we sat on the veranda and uh, and then we immediately all uh, swami called us inside and i had never seen the interview room even though my parents had been devotees for like 15 or 16 years i never knew what the interview room looks like so i was somewhere at the back and then i was thinking oh first time i'm getting interview and i don't even get to be close to swami and then i looked at swami's chair and there was a small place right next to his chair so i just gently got up and i told my Uh, friends i'll just sit there so it was not in front of swami it was on this side i said it's okay at least i'll be close to him uh so while uh, then swami started talking uh and he asked us various questions now my english was not very good because i was coming from punjab i could write well but there was one quotation which i was not sure when uh, of swami what it means so swami asked i think um mm, what is the purpose of education and everybody said uh, swami education is for life and not for a living and i was the only one who was saying swami education is for living and not for life and uh, because i thought um, living means perhaps you have to live i didn't understand that it is not for earning money not just for earning money and then i did not know that swami's chair in the interview room was a rotating chair so when i gave a wrong answer i needn't have been too afraid because swami turned around 
and he looked at me and he said hey tum bolo ha huh? and uh, there was dead silence in the room and i thought oh dear that those few seconds were like eternity i thought if i give the wrong answer munni aunty and warden aunty our principal and warden they are going to take me to task that how could you not give the right answer and i was in my mind i said swami please say the right answer i'm still confused whether it is for life or living so and then i said <clears throat> education is for life and not for living <laughs> yes that's correct swami said and uh, so uh, i was very happy that my life was saved and another was that also that swami turned around i did not know it's a rotating chair and he and then the next question he was uh, he said that there are two kinds of eyes one is the physical eye and then he wrote it like a teacher on the board and he said there's another eye and the physical eye is different but the eye it is uh, the big eye it is the same in everyone he said that then he asked one of my friends what is your name she said vandana then he asked another one what is your name uh she said sarmishtha and then he asked me what is your name i did not know what to say because my principal and teachers used to call me uh, sumana and whereas my name in punjab is suman and that's what swami had named me when i was little so i said suman so he said even then i said mishtha i sumana names are different but i is only one so today morning when i saw uh, brother sai's email uh, he had written sumana <laughs> sister sumana so i do not mind uh, even if people call me sumana because it doesn't matter that's the name swami called me by and whether they call me suman or suman uh, i just surrender to swami it's okay uh, earlier when i was little my name was roma so my all uh, cousins they would tease me that uh, roma means the cry baby you should cry even though in bengali it means somebody who gives you lot of joy uh, so i think this is funny i was teased from childhood and i was so upset that in those days if we used to write a letter to swami he would give the answer he would write the answer it happened for maybe around a few months and uh, so i wrote that uh, baba mera name badal do mera naam badal do please change my name so it seems swami took a few days and then he wrote suman in hindi so from that time my name changed from uh, roma to suman uh, so my life is surrendered i hope i can offer uh, everything to swami and uh, turn out to be his instrument okay yes you can tell that
Thank you. Well, I'm really very thankful to Swami to share his experiences today because it is just bringing back to my memory that uh, it is so important for each one of us to have a one-to-one -one relationship with Swami. Swami used to say, your relationship with me should be direct. That means all the time if you're connecting to him, uh, I remember there were so many difficulties, but because I was constantly in Swami's school and college, I was tuned into him. Um, I did not feel that much of pain. I was saved from so much of mental or any kind of pressures or agony. And this is a very powerful reminder for me. And also that when you have that kind of relationship and you are not worried about how the world is treating you and you are able to recuperate and get strength from him he will break all the rules for you uh, so I'm coming back to what my brother was saying that yes uh, they say that apna maan tale tal jaye par bhakt ka maan na talte dekha प्रभु को नियम बदलते देखा सो आई विल शेयर लाइक टू एक्सपीरियंसेस वन इज फ्रॉम माय कॉलेज एंड वन द मोस्ट रीसेंट वन वेयर स्वामी ब्रूक ऑल द रूल्स जस्ट टू सेव अस एंड इन कॉलेज वंस इट व्हाट हैपन वाज इन अनंतपुर वी यूज्ड टू गो ओनली वंस इन अ वाइल मे बी टू टाइम्स इन अ मंथ गो टू बुटापट्टी फॉर स्वामी दर्शन and we used to be just waiting and then sometimes it used to be just darshan and come back and i was really missing this days what we had at school where we used to go every thursday and be treated like vips only 18 girls swami would send like ice creams during summer and only 20 will be left over so our principal would say okay 18 girls only in uh, 12th grade give them everything if swami sends any sarees or anything for teachers and there are extra there would be 18 pieces only for us so we got, we got that real vip uh, treatment from swami and all our teachers when we went to anantapur it was like we were nowhere nobody recognized us and uh, since some people used to complain that uh, the students who come from uh, swami's primary school they think very high of themselves so i was particularly very careful i was very uh, i used to carry myself very calmly and not show up but still i used to feel bad i, I used to miss swami so once it so happened that we were supposed to go uh, one weekend to puttaparthi and in the meantime some news came from parthi that one lady uh, in the darshan time she almost uh, fell over swami uh, she tried to uh, hold his feet and swami almost fell over so the uh, devotees and the uh, sorry the uh, volunteers and the security has become very strict so our warden and uh, principal they announced that this time when we go to parthi nobody is going to touch swami and nobody should uh, take try to take his pad namaskar without permission and uh, swami is going to stay 5 feet away from everybody and uh, just imagine we are in uh, anantapur and we are going to go next week and just before going they are telling us this news that don't try to go close to swami don't try to talk to him don't touch uh, don't take his pad namaskar i was a little bit 
I'm not very happy about it, but I continue to pray. I said, okay, I am just connected to Swami. I am going to continue chanting Gayatri Mantra. And then Swami, please, you have to make me feel your presence and love and your grace. Uh, and then the time came and we went to uh, Parthi. So morning we got up and uh, that day it so happened that uh, while I was uh, entering the Darshan grounds, I suddenly saw that there was on the corner uh, on the lady side where Anandpur uh, girls were sitting, they had a whole batch where the teachers would be sitting. Nobody sat there. And one uh, volunteer just, she signed to me and she said, you sit here. So it was like, supposing this is the square right in front of the mandir, Swami is going to come. She made me sit on this corner first, along with the teachers. And uh, uh, the teachers would be sitting next to me. I said, she told me to sit, so I'm going to sit. I'm not moving. And I closed my eyes and I started praying. <laughs> I sat in the front row. And uh, after some time, the teachers came. And then uh, our Rajeshwari Patel ma'am, she came and sat, sat right next to me. And she thought, wow, uh, a student is sitting right ne uh, next to the teachers. And that too in the corner, first seat. And in the meantime, music started. And Swami walked out. He walked out straight, slowly he glided. And he came and stood right next to me. He was so close that his robe was almost touching my, uh, like I, I could easily touch his robe. So, and he was standing like this and looking at entire public and giving them darshan. And what, I, it was literally, he was telling me that you can touch my feet. And I, only Rajeshwari Patel ma'am could see that my hands slowly went out. <laughs> and sometimes even when you touch Swami's feet, uh, you know, when, when you are just trying to get a Padmamaskar, you don't feel anything. The moment touched, I touched Swami's robe, I could immediately feel Swami's energy flowing through me. And... Uh, I like it is nice my main reason for sharing this experience is and then Raju ma'am never spoke anything she didn't say anything because she knew that Swami was he didn't utter from his mouth but he was uh, giving me permission so Swami broke all the rules just for uh, to give me Padmamaskar and make me feel uh, very assured and secure and safe and just to encourage me so uh so this was during the time when everybody said, uh, Swami is not coming close to anybody. He's staying five feet away. Of course, he stood away from mostly everyone. Uh, he gave this Padmamaskar. Now I will come to the more recent time. This time when we went to pick up my parents, uh, we had to stop on our way uh, in New Delhi after the flight. And uh, we had our uh, train to catch at four o'clock. So I'm just going to tell that uh, how Swami broke the rules. Uh, when we landed on the airport, my cousin, she came to pick us up and she said, come have your lunch uh, at our home and then we'll drop you at uh, railway station. We asked her, you know, it's okay. We'll eat something from here. We don't want to miss the train. We want to reach Jalandhar by night. And uh, our seats are booked for Shatabdi, four o'clock. She said, it's only two o'clock and uh, the train station is only 15 minutes away, 15 or 20 minutes away from our house. Come, you can have nice lunch and we'll drop you. Uh, one thing, please uh, don't trust uh, New Delhi's traffic. Uh, we learned it the hardest way. Now, I was just going with the flow and I thought it's good, you know, if you get homemade food. Uh, so we went with them. We were eating and we we thought, okay, the train is at four, at least by three. She's saying 15, 20 minutes. We should at least leave by three. Uh, so we left at three and we saw there was so much traffic. And I was like, no, Swami will take care. And I was getting agitated. And all our friends, uh, Rana Ji, my, uh, my husband, he had arranged for a person to come on the station and help us with the luggage. He was, I think, coming from Jammu or somewhere. And he was getting, sir, you are getting very late. It's already 3.45 and you are not reached the station. And 
I had not even told my parents that we are stopping in my cousin's house. I did not want to tell them. And guess what? We were like, the train station is, say, the entrance of Sarvadharma. And we are stuck behind the cars and there is a policeman in the middle. Uh, and I'm telling my uh, cousin, I am going to leave this car. Ranaji, let's take our suitcases and just walk into the railway station. Uh, because we are going to miss the train. And if we miss our first train on our journey, everybody is going to say, these people are so lousy. They are not disciplined. <laughs> they uh, missed their train. And where was the need for them to go to cousin's house for eating food and whatever? And I, I was like, Swami, I'm so sorry. I have to pray to you. And everybody is telling, Shatabdi always leaves on time. It leaves at, if it is four o'clock, it will leave on at four. That's why people trust that train because, and it also makes you reach in four hours, which otherwise the journey would take nine hours. And just imagine it was five minutes to four and we are still stuck there. And there was somebody in the next car and I said, you know, we want to go in front. What should we do? He said, uh, no, it doesn't matter. Maybe another half an hour, it will open up. And I said, no. He said, what time is your train? Uh, I said, four o'clock. He said, what? It's going to be four already. Oh, it's okay. Our train is at five. Uh, so we'll hopefully reach. And I started, I said, Om Sai Shrai Vidmahe Satya Devaya Dhimahi Tanna Sarva Prachodayat. I didn't want my cousin to feel bad that and I said, Swami, you have to do something. And guess what? One minute before four, four o'clock, it opened up. We reached there. And then one of, uh, uh, sorry, Ranaji's brother had told that just make sure that you don't give your luggage to four or five coolies. Just have one person. When we reached there, <laughs> we saw a bunch of coolies and we told them we have to catch Shatabdi, four o'clock Shatabdi. And five of them took all the five suitcases and first they thought they'll get our suitcases checked in the security then they realized no they'll never catch the train so they all started running towards the train and imagine the two of us me and my husband we are jogging so that is one time uh, the gym helped <laughs> and I said okay running and jogging is helping believe it or not I was like Swami please I hope these coolies are good people <laughs> But thankfully, they put our stuff in the front bogey. And our executive class uh, bogey was in the end. I said, no, it doesn't matter. I'll help my husband and I'll carry all my luggage there. And the, it is 4.10 and this train is still there. So I said, what happened? So we, in the meantime, uh, those coolies and my husband and his friend, they contacted the ticket master. Uh, he said, yeah, you can easily move because there is a problem with air conditioner uh, and the train is late for the first time today. And again, another jogging trip with the coolies all carrying suitcases and I'm carrying my hand carry and we are running from one end of the railway station to the last uh, executive uh, bogey. So we are like huffing and puffing and everybody is like cribbing in the executive class oh, this uh, Shatabdi never gets late. And and we settle down. Ah, and then they announced, uh, sorry, the Shatabdi is uh, late today because of some problem with the air conditioner, conditioning system. And a lady sitting there, I think this uh, train got late because of you guys. <laughs> so Swami broke all the rules for our sake. So... Uh, so that is one. And uh, anything else, brother? If anybody wants to ask any questions. I, I told my kids, I said, how am I going to? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes. So Swami is our eternal friend. Uh, only thing is, I'm realizing sometimes I'm forgetting to turn on to him, turn to him and ask him for help. Uh, it is difficult for me sometimes mentally. I Perhaps I'm very attached to so many things, uh, but this song always gives me so much solace 
if you can play that. So I believe a person was trying to cross a bridge and he saw an angel uh, and the bridge was very hard to cross. It was almost broken. And at the end of the bridge, he saw an angel standing there. So he was like just trying to cry out to the angel, please come and help me. Uh, I need to cross this bridge. So but the angel was just standing there and not moving and coming forward to help him. So this person with great difficulty crosses the bridge and when he reaches the end, he realizes that the bridge was actually broken and the angel was holding on to that broken end so that this person could cross. So uh, since tomorrow is also Father's Day, I'm going to end with uh, a small experience about my uh, father, my dad. And I really am very grateful to Swami for being blessed with a very uh, amazing dad. He's so kind. He has so much patience. And he's so encouraging all the time. Uh, and even now when he is with me, he'll say, you finish all your work, Pita, and then we will go out or we'll do whatever. And uh, it's very kind of him. And from, his, from my childhood, I have seen him working and doing Swami's work centers, opening different centers in Punjab. And uh, they would do like 24-hour bhajans and Shivratri 12-hour bhajans would be organized in our home. And so the first time Swami gave us interview in uh, uh, Whitefield, only to me, my brother and uh, my mom, Swami asked, that time my father used to have kidney problem. That is, the pain is excruciating. And my mother had many sleepless nights trying to help him. And the doctor said, even if they do operation, it may not help. Uh, so uh, when Swami called us in the interview room, we were just praying to Swami. And then Swami said, oh, or husband kaisa hai? He asked my mom. Uh, my mom said she didn't know what, she was so emotional. She didn't know what to say. And she didn't remember. But then Swami said, Mujhe malum hai, uska theek nahi hai. Main usko next time call karega and I'll bless him. Uh, so he called them again, the three of them. Uh, I was in Anandpur that time. And then uh, he asked my father, uh, as my brother had told. Uh, and he said, you know, and my mom was sitting on one side and my father was sitting on one side. And he said, uh, he tried to make them both connect, I guess. And uh, he said, Dekho, uh, uh, wo kitna achha hai. he told my mother, uh, your husband is so nice. You make uh, some vegetable in the morning and you give him in the evening, still he doesn't say anything. He just eats it. You know? And then uh, he said, and he also, sometimes when he has the pain in his stomach, his wife will, uh, she will ask him, uh, uh, like, how are you? He'll say, no, I'm okay. And the moment she steps out of, uh, the moment she steps out of the kitchen, he will uh, bend down. In the kitchen, they had a cupboard near the floor. And he said, he'll take out the tablets, eat them, and 
quickly drink water and when she comes back uh he will say uh, she'll say what happened no nothing i'm fine i was just drinking water so even till today my dad even if he has some problem he'll try to show to us all that i'm fine i'm good i'm doing well and uh, then swami said you uh before creating ring for him he said you do my work and he put his hand on swami's shoulder and said i i will do your work and uh, he created the ring and he made him wear he's wearing it till today and he said tumhe koi problem nahi hoga aaj ke baad koi problem nahi hoga so uh, till today my dad is doing fine he didn't have any kidney issues after that uh, maybe some minor little bit pain so i pray to bhagwan to bless all the dads and uh, uh, thank you for bringing all amazing people in our lives wishing everyone a very happy blessed fulfilling Uh, Father's Day. Right on. Anybody have questions? So, um, sister, uh, there are a couple of things I wanted to ask you. When we uh, mentioned, when we spoke the last time, mm -hmm. you spoke about your brother's birth, which you said was a miracle. Mm -hmm. I mean, last time he couldn't talk; he didn't have the time to do it. So, oh, if you yeah. can talk about that. and also the second one is you know your experience when you were getting the gold medal from swami you know if you can tell a little bit sure sure that, thank you brother for giving that idea uh, so uh, i was okay we were in a village in punjab my dad had become a manager and we were there and my mom uh, uh, during that time she uh, that time also she had some problem because she saw an accident and it affected her mentally she saw a bus accident and uh, and then it affected her she would not be able to sleep in the nights in those days perhaps it would be called a depression or anxiety and my father tried all medicines nothing helped and then uh, i think my brother narrated right how one hakim ji told him and then uh, when she was expecting him uh, swami would every time write about like you know what's going to happen and then my father was not very confident that she can have the baby at home uh so he was insisting that she should go to a nearby city like ludhiana and have the delivery there my mom did not want to go she wanted to stay at home and uh, so uh my father was still in dilemma uh, what to do because there was so much uh, tension at home so swami slip came that mamta beti hospital nahi jayegi mamta beti ghar pe rahegi that is my mom she will stay at home uh, so that was settled uh, and uh, when uh, it seems after he was yeah one day before he was born one of my cousins uh, swami came in her dream and said that uh, look at uh, he gave her a nice beautiful boy baby to play with and uh, she was playing and then swami said give him back now uh, i will i'm going to give this boy to your bua tomorrow uh, next day when he's going to be born uh, i'm going to give it to her my mother was always very scared because swami used to keep on referring to him as kaka kaka means a boy uh, so in that small village swami uh, my mother was very concerned what if a girl is born <laughs> and then swami will get a bad name <laughs> and uh, uh, but however and then after my brother was born uh, the lady the midwife she told uh, uh, who is this uh, she saw swami's picture there she said who is this person with uh, hair around his head my mom said he is my guru he is sai baba she said he was standing behind your head all the time during delivery and blessing you and he disappeared after that and uh, so that's how swami took care of my brother's uh, this thing and then after he was born after one week when we called the priest he started saying no no this boy is very uh, kya bolte hai his grahas are very heavy on the father and the father should not have seen his face for seven days and even after seven days he should have looked at uh, his face in mustard oil uh so again there is a turmoil just imagine how we create misery for ourselves something happy is happening you got a nice baby healthy and swami took care of everything and we are letting other people dictate our happiness 
and uh, so again there's a turmoil my uh, dadi ma my grandmother and uh, grandfather are there and then then swami had to write again that pandit log jhoot bolta hai uh, kaka sabhi ke liye shubh hai and i'm just hoping and praying swami let him be shubh for everybody including uh, mom and dad and let him bring happiness to everybody and uh, brother you were asking about gold medal ah okay so uh, uh, as i said that after coming from school coming to anandpur was a little bit a uh, very uh, down slide because we could not go and see swami often so after uh, when my mom got interview she asked swami that uh, swami uh, isko uh, msc karwaye beti ko after bsc after she finishes bsc so swami said nahi nahi usko mrs karwao uh, so my mom was nahi nahi swami usko msc karwani hai then swami said oh then it looked as though he was reading my mind and he said meri beti bahar ke college mein nahi padh sakti uh, that is my daughter cannot study in outside colleges uh, tum pehle ladka dekho and uh, so my parents were okay my mother was quite disappointed so when i completed bsc and went back home i did not know what to do and then i, I had asked some of my friends should i do bed because i wanted to become a teacher i didn't want to do medicine zoology because i did not like dissecting animals and <laughs> so i said i'll try again for being a teacher and i'll come for bed uh, of course some of my friends were like no only people who have no aim in life uh, they go for bed <laughs> and try to become teachers that was in her state i think kerala her her dad was a heart surgeon very famous one and so i was so disappointed so just imagine i surrendered to swami and i did not even send my application on time for uh, bed i was like if he wants me to study uh, he will give me admission on the last moment i wrote a letter and we went to parthi uh, and we were like so depressed i had another friend she said i don't feel any motivation uh, to do whatsoever i said same thing with me but i'm just going if he gives me admission i'll do it and then i got admission and then i thought maybe if i try to get a gold medal i could motivate myself and but when i went there in my batch there were eight girls uh, all those who had topped the inner college for uh, for bzc botany zoology chemistry or physics chemi- those who had topped but because boys had got gold medal they had come for bed batch so that they could get <laughs> oh god that's the only time i guess swami uh, let me target at a goal but then i said swami just to keep myself motivated i'm going to request you if you think it is okay i'll study really hard if i can get gold medal and it will be nice but the moment i went there and i saw my batch they were math geniuses like they will solve physics problems and chemistry everything they know so smart they had uh, they were all toppers eight of them and uh, i thought there's no chance <laughs> for me but i don't know how in the first trimester only two of us got o grade so when you go to anandpur both the uh, semesters you have to get o grade and in the second semester it was only two of us were it was like elimination round only two of us were left and i was again i had a, a, a contact with swami i would just do my best and surrender everything and uh, i remember still remember the day uh, they were they used to be internals and external exams internals our teachers would grade and externals they used to be teachers from venkateshwara university the teachers they would grade our papers and they would also come and observe us while we are teaching and uh, when i went to uh, sign the internal papers i saw all my friends coming and there was another uh, friend of mine she was also there both of us had got o grade and i saw everybody coming very happily and i went to sign and when i was signing against my name i was like i just happened to see what is the difference between grade marks of me and her and i saw and my eyes were like getting uh, i couldn't see like 
because all the subjects there was a, such a big difference between grading for both of us so it was like i had almost no chance of getting uh, the, uh you know of topping the class uh so i was like quite dispirited but as i went back i said swami it is your wish uh i just want to do my best give me the strength to do my best i accept your decisions and i gave it up it so happened in my external exams i scored so high that uh i got the goal uh, that i was uh, selected and then it was very strange when i called parthi that i said uh is my grade the highest and uh, they said yeah it looks like but we think unless somebody sponsors a gold medal uh, we'll not be giving it we don't know it's not sure yet then i thought what is this sponsoring gold medals so uh then because in swami school we used to just think everything swami gives <laughs> uh but uh, then yes it was special grace from swami that uh, uh yes i got the gold medal also because i had prepared a heart uh model 3d model in which i had put lights for red and blue uh that is pure and impure blood uh and when the external observation people came uh the moment i put on the model of heart for seventh grade students to explain how the heart functions the moment the lights came on the entire class was like <gasps> and uh in those days nobody had seen a three dimensional model with lights moving lights to represent heart and i think that's why he gave me an outstanding outstanding grade and today i am like a stem teacher <laughs> so i guess swami prepared me from that time but i am still humble there's lots of uh, things to learn in life we are just a drop of uh water in the huge ocean and i would rather be just uh be immersed in swami and uh, offer all my activities to him thank you said so thank you sister sumana for i said sumana see uh, it's i think it gets come from swami's words to me so it's a wonderful talk thank you again for you know this talk and it's it's very interesting you know one one of the last things when you just said something that you're still learning you know swami did give an example on that i don't know how many of you know this story when some of the students in the final year of their uh, bcom college went to swami and uh, they wanted an interview because it's the final year so they were asking saying swami we are in the final year bcom can we get an interview and swami said what what should you study he said swami final year bcom and swami just didn't even pay attention and then he was talking to somebody else then he came back and said what did you study he said swami final year bcom again swami <laughs> didn't wonder four times he did that then the students started thinking maybe something is wrong with me rather than swami because swami cannot ask that many times then somebody got a bright idea i said swami third year bcom swami ah that is right then then swami then they realized final year means there's nothing else to learn <laughs> you know and swami is telling them we have a long way to go so when you said that you know that's exactly what swami is thinking is and also the most interesting thing for us is that you know every time we have a samarpan program i've been telling like a broken record you know we plan for somebody and somebody else comes and until last week we didn't have a designated speaker for this month and then we had our board meeting and you showed up there in the meeting which you you know no, normally we don't and then we asked you whether you will and within a week you know she agreed to do it and prepared all the slides and all the material so really thank you very much for that and it has to be swami's wish for that so thanks again sister you know that's a true swami student you know S still not a final year like i said you know, swami said so please uh, we like to um felicitate you for your coming here so if you can come by the S swami ganesha stage yeah sister vani garu will felicitate you please okay this side you come
Thanks again. So now we'll do the Maharati and then we'll conclude. Okay, Sairam. <laughs>